In this weather focus episode of the 2016 Skyrim modding guide, we compare two weather overhaul mods, Purity and Climates of Tamriel. And then we'll ramp up each of those mods with True Storms and then add some potentially dangerous lightning. Hey guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel, and we are with weather mods, and I took a look at a number of them, and it started small and went big. I looked at a couple, you know, weather add-ons for different lighting mods, but really all it did was change the template of the lighting to kind of match what the template was interiorly, you know, namely ELLFX and RLO. So they weren't true weather mods. And I went up from there, and it basically got down to the big two, and that would be Purity and Climates of Tamriel. So I looked at both real closely, and we'll go through and look at a couple short vignettes of a montage on each of them and then we'll come back and install them and then we'll finish up with true storms and adding some lightning to them and we'll make it all work together so let's go take a look at those montages when looking at purity's two night settings classic and realism i noticed that classic was very much had a blue tint to it it didn't seem to have anything had to do with the auroras around me. I did it on a clear blue night and it still had a blue tint. Darkness level was pretty much okay for most players. I found if you're doing a let's play, it might be a little bit on the dark side. Realism on the other hand is hella dark and it would probably, you know, definitely need some sort of external lighting like wearable lanterns, quick light, and definitely something that would add more light to the surrounding environment or you would have a definite hard time seeing it. But oddly enough, there's no blue tint to it. That blue tint is gone. And I found the color differentials quite pleasing, actually, but it was way too dark for my taste. The Aurora's Impurity are a delight to the eyes. They, you know, are vivid, they're bright. They have a great impact on the amount of surrounding light around you when you're outside. Uh, they will change the exterior color, brighten up the landscape, and you can see all the different colors. Blue has a blue tint purple, orange, green, they all change the landscape very dramatically and uh, make for a nice change. Daytime light quality was very good. It's definitely an improvement over the vanilla game. It uh, was very vivid. It allowed lots of contrast. The different weather systems of Purity allow for a number of different lights to be shown throughout the course of a week or a day, depending on the cloud levels. And they were different enough to be noticeable, but not, you know, overly done. The sun is probably my biggest complaint about purity. It's a little overbearing. The aura is just too bright and big and has a lot of glare to it. It does make for some great shots. And overall, I think that most people like it, but it's a bit much for my taste. The sky's impurity are definitely much bluer. You can tell that he's put a lot of time in making them a bright blue. If you have a clear day, it's going to be blazingly blue. You know, when you have contrast it to the clouds in the area, it does make for a nice change. The lights in the sky do change throughout uh, the different courses of the 50 different weather patterns and have you know differing sky colors, and that makes it a nice change. The clouds are better. I wouldn't say they're the best I've seen, but they are better. Uh, they have light fluffiness and sometimes wispy clouds, but I didn't see a lot of big puffy clouds. But I think they were quite good. Fogs, on the other hand, were a little flat to me. They did impart a sense of mysteriousness and gloom to an area, but they were you know, overall quite flat. I didn't see a lot of variation, didn't see any wisps coming around to tell me that, you know, there was texture or differentiations in the thickness of the fog. Sunrises and sunsets are really nice in purity. They combine the clouds and the sun and the sky to make very dramatic pictures, and they're quite nice overall. In general, you'll have them on a Almost nightly basis, you can look to the west and see a very nice sunset. As for the overall conclusion regarding purity, it is much more vivid and saturated. The colors are 
just vibrant and beautiful to look at. The overall impression that you get is that this is going to be one of those mods that is more for the fantasy feel. Everywhere you look in the environment of Skyrim using Purity has almost a picturesque, almost painting-like atmosphere. And if you're into that sort of thing, this is a good choice. I used it for a long time, and I always liked the way Purity looked, and it's one of my favorites. With Climates of Tamriel, you actually get four different night levels. The full mod will have Default, and then Darkness levels 1 through 3. I found that uh, the Default was about the same brightness, but had a different color scheme than the vanilla version. When you see the pictures, just know that they, you know, vanilla and default are about the same brightness levels, but it uses a different color palette. Level one would probably be my choice for when you're playing, when you're doing a let's play. Level two is what I would personally play at because it's dark enough, but didn't seem overbearing. Three was probably a little too dark for my taste. But overall, they all look very good. Using the color palette that Climate to Hammerail has, it looked very nice. Daytime light quality. Climate to Tamriel leans more on a natural daylight sort of light. It's a little brighter with a little bit of yellow into it, where Purity had more blues and greens added to it. And you can kind of see the difference. I found my eye being less drawn towards the colors on the screen and more towards the textures of the different items on the game. The sun is much more balanced in Climates of Tamriel. It's not overbearing, but it doesn't seem to fade in the background. It has different sizes depending on the actual weather that's involved. So you'll get variations in sun sizes. It's just kind of an ad, ad a quirk. The skies are very blue, but you're not gonna see that blue a whole lot. With this many number of weather possibilities with Climates of Tamriel, you'll see a high number of differentiations in the skies that you'll see. You'll see brilliant blues, then you'll see lighter blues, then you'll kind of see grays and sometimes other off colors. And that high variety is just not going to give you a consistent color day to day, and that actually works to its benefit. The clouds are great. That's just what I'll say. You got wispy clouds, puffy clouds, swirly clouds, mixtures of different things, big cumulus clouds with little wisps on the other side of the screen it they're just fantastic fogs are very nice it swirls and has different thicknesses to it like it has a different density within the fog bank and it adds a nice atmospheric to it sunrises and sunsets where purity would have consistently good sunsets climate tamriel doesn't have it but when you get a spectacular sunset they are spectacular. Those bigger clouds will lead to, you know, just incredible views. You'll get ambers and pinks and reds all mixed into a sunset when Clamps of Tamriel hits a good sunset, and they are fantastic. But like I said, they are not consistent day to day. In prior versions of Clamps of Tamriel, before version 5, the, the knock on it was always, it made Skyrim look cold and kind of murky. It doesn't have that feeling anymore. It's it's a different thing. It can be bright and vibrant, but at the same time, it could be dense and dark and foreboding, and the storms themselves are very, very good. I'm having a hard time choosing between the two. I was a early Clams of Tamriel user in earlier versions, but I have not used version five. I'm gonna have to play around some more with it before I make a final conclusion. All right, now that we know what everything kind of looks like, let's go ahead and go into Mod Organizer. I have them all ready to go. And we are gonna start with Purity Classic. And basically, what you decide on Purity Classic or Purity uh, Realism is up to you, but we will go to the internet and look at them. And it is Purity and it is by last, Skyrim Mod 65242. And you can see it was done back in 2015. Now, what you have to understand about Purity, it is not just a weather mod. It is a basic overhaul. It has pure weather. Basically, think of this. You know, last made pure weathers and pure waters and a few other mods that he integrated into Purity. 
So you can go through and read this stuff, you know, immersive weather based, that's pure weathers, and it has been updated from version 2.2. The latest version, which is 1.8, is slightly different than the previous version, which had pure waters and pure weathers in it. So it has been updated slightly. So a lot of the patches that you'll see may not work for the newest version. So you have weather, lighting, and it does change the lighting quite a bit, as you saw. Unique waterfalls, and this is a real neat feature that it uh, adds different stone structures and things to the different waterfalls in Skyrim, and they're very, quite nice. Pure waters, we talked about that and changes the waters, and a number of high-quality textures, and we'll get to that. 60 new textures that are included with purity. And then there's an optional landscape texture file that I'll show you in the files. So when we come to the files, we look at it and you have Purity Classic and Purity Realism. So whichever one you wanted based off the lighting that you'll need, you can go ahead and download whichever one of you that. Now, just remember that either one of these has the extra textures inside of it. This Purity Landscape texture is about another 200 or so textures for ground, rocks, that sort of thing. They're, you know, it's an add-on. So you don't need this, but if you're looking for a low impact uh, landscape texture, this may be something that if you don't plan on doing anything else, this may be a nice add-on, and it's pretty low weight. Optional files, you have uh, Landers of Skyrim Purity Preset. This may be something we come back to in the next episode, and some other retextures, and those are the two that you want to take a look at. And we're going to go ahead and install it with Mod Organizer, and you can see when we double click this, manual, right click set data directory, you'll see a readme, we don't need the readme, we have a BSA and an ESP. So the first time I installed it, I just went ahead and said, okay, it looks good, go ahead. And I activated it and I waited for it to update, all mods refresh, and it should give me an overwrite, there it is, and let's go up and see what it does. It is overwriting the textures of the high res texture pack. Okay. Well, I wanted to know what they were. And I know where this is going. If you follow along, you know what you're doing. File tree, you don't see the textures. And that's because they're all contained in the purity.bsa. BSA is basically an archive file. It's Bethesda S archives, whatever it is. So all of them are contained in there. Well, this may be a problem later on when we try start trying to see texture mods, what they're overriding. So I decided to install this a little bit differently, and this may be a more advanced thing you may not see a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And we're gonna come over into our configure settings and workarounds. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, plugins, and we go into our BSA extractor. And when you get this option, you'll see it's enabled false by default. You can go ahead and double click and select true. Now, what it's going to do is take that BSA, unpack it, and dump it into Purity. So you can see all the texture files. You can do this with almost any mod that has a BSA. And a lot of people do recommend doing that because, you know, you have dedicated hard drives. It takes up more space, but it does run a little bit faster. It's just an extra step that the game engine doesn't have to do. It doesn't have to unpack the BSA and then load the texture. So that it may be something you may want to think about whenever you see something with a BSA that's a texture file. So go ahead and click OK. And we will come back and we will reinstall Purity Classic. Click Manual, Set Data Directory, and we have the same thing. I don't need the README, and click OK. And activate. You can see it's now overriding the same file, the texture pack, but when you open this up and you come over to your file tree, you can now see the meshes and the textures. And this is a very effective thing if you want to see what everything is overriding it. Because when you start including lots of texture mods, a lot of these landscape textures may, depending on where you place things in your left pane, be overwritten by purity and you would never know it if you didn't extract the BSAs. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, and that's how I'm going to leave it. I don't recommend unpacking BSAs as a general rule. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go back into my plugins, go to my BSA extractor, and put it back to false. Because I only want it to work when I want it to work. Click OK. We now have all those textures in there. And that's pretty much it for purity. So if you add a texture on top of this, just make sure that you know purity is positioned appropriately so that you have the texture that you want overriding it. And now you would be able to see what they're overriding and be able to, you know, hide this stuff if you want to do that. Plugins on this is a single plugin. And we're going to go ahead and leave that for the time being. And I'm going to go back to my downloads. So let's go back to the internet. Remember in the video I said that the purity lights were a little dark for me? If I decided to go with this, I would probably install Purity Brighter Nights by Pharos. It's mod 69911. What Pharos has done is basically changed, and you can see it switching here on the screen, changed the brightness settings in the game to different levels. You can have increased light by 30, 50, 100%. So I tested it out, and I did like the 50%. You can see right there. In the files, you look at it, and you'll have three different ones. And you have the 30%, the 50%, and the 100%. And you can kind of play with them and based off of how you install it, and I'll show you how to install it the way I would do it, you know, you would pick the one you want and install it. So I would just download the manager. I did 50%. I thought it was the appropriate level. If I were going to do a Let's Play using Purity, I would choose the 50% brightness. Let's go into Mod Organizer. And I have Purity Brightest Nights, and there it is right now. And you can see it is the 50% version. And I'm going to go ahead and double click to install manual, and you'll see what we got. It's the data directory on top, and it's puritybn50.esp. Now, if I were to play this, I would go ahead and remove all that and just leave it purity. And what that's going to do is put that into my purity file. So, if Purity has an update, you just have to know that this is going to contain this extra ESP and you may need to reload it. But this is the way I do it for cleanliness sake. And I click OK. And I'm going to merge that in because it's just an ESP. I'm also going to ignore that update because we just installed it. So when you double click on this, go to your optional ESPs. Now you have the Purity ESP and the Purity BN50, Brighter Nights 50%. And that's the way we want it. So if you had the BN30 and BN100 in there, you could go ahead and play around with it and move things up and down and select the brightness that you want. If you just wanted to have purity, you could go ahead and leave it as is, or you could pick one of the ones in your optional ESPs and then move it down. And we'll go ahead and close it. Come over to your plugins and select it. Now we're going to run loot and see what it does. Okay, so it's decided that Purity wants to be up here. I'm, I've am i tested it a number of times. It always seems to be right there, and I'm fine with that. You can move this up now that we know kind of where things where it wants to be. You can move things up, and it looks like it's between the immersive weapon stuff, and that would be appropriate because it's only overriding for right now. Excuse me. Let me highlight it. Only overriding this. But just keep in mind, that where you place your other landscape textures will change this. So the BN50, I tested it out and I could put it right there and loot didn't seem to mind. It didn't really care at all about where you put it. It left it at the bottom because it didn't see a need to move it. But that's where I would put it and you just need to make sure it's after purity. So that's all there is to it on that. So we're going to minimize that down, close these up, and we will move on. The next mod, of course, is Climb as a Tamriel, Weather, Lighting, and Audio by JSAC71. And it's mod number 17802. This is a much more extensive mod. It is probably a little over twice the size. But it does a lot more stuff. And as far as the weather is concerned, it does not add new textures. It does not add the new structures around the waterfalls and does not have a lighting or a weather module. Correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't know this. Climate to Boston. I didn't know this was coming soon. Huh, go figure. So there's a lot of good information on here. If you want to go read about all this stuff, you can go and click these different sites and this takes you to an external page.
page. For our intents and purposes, we're going to look at the files. And you see Climates of Tamriel, Climates of Tamriel 5, just remember version 5. This is the newest version. It was done back in November of 2015, so it's relatively new. When you look at the optional files, Climates of Tamriel Winter Edition, it was for version 3.1. So I would recommend not doing it. I tested it briefly just to see what it would do. There were problems. That's all I'll say. So just remember, this is for version 3.1, not for version 5. I would just go ahead and leave it as it is. So download that with Manager. So when you come over to Mod Organizer and you're going into your downloads, I'm going to remove Purity. And I'm going to remove the Brightest Nights, get it cleared out of the way. And we can see Climates of Tamriel. When you, let's do this first. I'm going to deactivate. You know, normally I would remove it, but for this video, I'm going to leave it up because we're going to go back and forth and do different things. So, Purity's been deactivated. Climates of Tamriel, double click to install, and you're presented with a faux mod. Let's open this up so we can see a little bit more here. There we go. And you're going to have the main file. That's the what everybody needs. Then you have Dungeons and Caves, and basically the default Climates of Dan Tamriel Dungeons Hardcore and Climates of Tamriel Dungeons Hazardous. These are basically just lighting changes to the dungeons. We'll be addressing the dungeons and the caves as far as the lighting goes in a later episode. So I'm going to leave that default. I'm going to do the same thing with interiors because we'll be looking at a lot of interior mods that I don't want to interfere with Climates of Tamriel. I really don't. I don't need the extra headache. I'm going to leave that as default. Come down to Vanilla Nights. You have the default experience. One, two, three, and one, two, and three. Okay, so I keep thinking this counts as one, but we saw in the video what the default experience was like. Basically, choose the one you want. Now, this isn't one of those things you can just go ahead and click one and then come back in game or do anything like that. So you'll have to install one and then go back in and reinstall the other stuff later. I prefer just going with level one because it's easy to see if I do further tests later on for videos and I decide to use Climate of Tamriel, I want you guys to be able to see it. And then the DLC patches, Climate of Tamriel, Dawnguard patch, and Dragonborn patch, and click install. And activate it. Come over to your plugins. And you see they dump them all at the bottom here. Let's go ahead and run loot and see what it does. And it didn't change anything. So just be aware for right now, it didn't change anything. So Climbs of Tamriel is fully installed. When we get into the mods later into this episode, you may see this change around a bit. Okay, it's just something to keep in mind. So, that's it for that. You know, Purity and Climates of Tamriel are all installed. And we will move on to our next mods. One last note before we move on. I just remembered to tell you that with Climates of Tamriel, wait 24 hours in-game if you want to see the correct lighting. I noticed that Purity didn't have this problem, but Climates of Tamriel did require that you wait 24 hours in-game, and then the lighting would take over. So, you should be good to go other than that. We will now move on. You know, the weathers in both Purity and Climates of Tamriel are quite good, especially the storms. They are a definite improvement over the vanilla game. You know, you have this. And this. Can be improved to this. And this. quite a difference, isn't it? So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. And the first mod we're going to look at is, of course, True Storms, Thunder, and Rain Redone by Fading Signal. Fading Signal is a great modder, and I appreciated all of his work. It is mod number 63478. Uh, it was done in 2015. I would go ahead and read all this stuff. You know, he does great work. He does stuff for Fallout 4 too now. So just read all this stuff, know what you're getting and how to install it, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Go to your files, 
there's two versions. I would just go ahead and get the real one. The light one, basically all it does is change the sound effects. You saw how loud it was with the rain. You can go ahead and get this one. But I would go ahead and get the full size one. It's not much bigger. It's an all-in-one staller, but you know, there's nothing big on that. You're also going to need two patches for this. And the first one is Purity of True Storms, a compatibility patch. And it is done by MC Tag, mod number 66146. And it's basically just an ESP to allow True Storms to work with Purity. And then you're also going to need True Storms Climates of Tamriel version 5 patch by Collins Wrath, mod number 72615. And same thing, just an ESP. So on your files on these, basically the one file for True Storms Purity, download with Map Manager. There is one storm on, on Purity that is not fixed. You can go ahead and download that as well. It basically just patches that one thing. But I think, you know, for the amount there, just gets the one there on uh, True Storms Purity, just download that with Manager. And True Storms Climates of Tamriel, just one, one patch. There you go. Let's show you how to install these. Go into Mod Organizer. And the first thing we're going to do is True Storms Thunder and Rain Redone. Double click to install and it opens a faux mod. And basically, here's all your options. Now, it says Pure Weather and it says Climates of Tamriel. Remember, Purity is a version of Pure Weather, but it's version 2.2 .2 for this. So, you know, if you're using Purity, click Vanilla. And Climates of Tamriel is actually, this is the old patch 3.1. Version 5 does not work with this. So for both versions, Purity and Clams of Tamriel, just leave it vanilla. Now, Supreme Storms is a mod I do not use. So I don't think you need to have this, but even if you did, I would probably go Supreme Storms vanilla. Supreme Storms Clams of Tamriel is, of course, the old patch. So for the most part, just leave this installed basically vanilla, and it, the patches will do its work. Install. Go ahead and click install, and you can see I have Purity activated right now. Now I'm going to show you how to install the patches. I'm going to do it for testing purposes. I'm going to install both of them into one. So let's do the, let's remove that from view since it gets a little confusing. Let's do the Purity patch first. Double click to install. I'm going to click manually. You can see it's just one ESP. Now I'm just going to put in Purity, I'm just going to put in Let's clean this up a bit. True storms hyphen patches and click OK. So now I can activate that. You can see inside here it's one ESP. That's for purity. Now on Claps of Tamriel, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to double click to install, but I'm going to put true storms just like I did before. Let's clean this up. Patches, and click Manual, and you see it's one ESP again. Click OK, and we want to merge it in. So now when you click that, you have two ESPs to choose with. So whichever one you're using, in this case, if it's Purity, I want to move Clamps to Tamriel up. So the reason why I'm choosing Purity first is that it had some funky loot stuff, but we'll just go ahead and go with it. So on plugins, you can see Purity is right there. True Storms and Purity. We're going to run Loot and see what it does. Okay, so Purity's up there. You can move, like we said, Purity BN50 is right there. As long as these load after these two, you're okay. So for this, you know, the there is no masters on this just except for Skyrim, and there should be an enabled master for this for true storms, actually for purity and true storms. So you could move these up and I don't think loot would have a problem with it. And same thing goes with this. Make sure that these are after purity. You can see the conflicts pop up so you know what it's doing because true storms is now overriding purity. If we now click that off, we'll need to move climates of Tamriel up if we did that. Activate climates of Tamriel, go into your patches. Go to your optional ESPs, 
Move that one up and move Climate to Tamriel down. Now, close that. You'll see that True Storm's Climate to Tamriel is there. We're going to need to reorder your load order using loot. See, it didn't do it right. I mean, this is where loot sometimes gets it wrong. I mean, they didn't, it didn't do what it was supposed to be doing. True Storms is supposed to be after Climbs of Tamriel, and it didn't do it. Loot is not infallible. So True Storms need to be there. If you were to run loot again, it would do it. It would be fine with it, this setup. So just make sure you read these things and know what you're getting if you're moving things around a lot. If I were to run loot right now, it would set it up the same exact way. It wouldn't move anything here. I've done numbers of tests on it, and it wasn't until I was switching back and forth and testing that I noticed that loot messed it up. So, just so you know. We will go ahead back to our downloads, and the we will remove these from view since we're all set up. I'm going to go ahead and go with Clamps of Tamriel for right now. Leave Purity unchecked. And the last mod we're going to be installing is let's close these down lightning during thunderstorms by minty that was the lightning that you saw in the sample videos and this is a great mod it actually will add lightning and extra thunder to the game and it really improves it i think that you know one of the things that it was always missing is that you never really saw the lightning this will add it it has a couple of different ways to Modify the lightning in game, and one is through a spell book that you'll get, and you can then learn the spell and cast the spell appropriately. It'll open up a menu for you. My preferred method is using the MCM, just wait for it to happen and go through it that way. You can change frequency and a bunch of other things. Now, one of the things that this mod does do is allow you to have lightning cause damage, and it's a heck of a lot of fun to watch that. Just just watch this clip. Just cracked me up the first time I saw that when it hits that that stall and just blows everything everywhere. It's just funny as heck. So files on this. Minty Lightning Mod version 23. You can either get the one with the BSA and uh, ESP, or you can just get the loose files. It doesn't really make that much of a difference in performance. So whichever one you want is fine with me. If you go into Mod Organizer, double click to install, manual, right click set data. You can get the readmes. I don't need readmes, but I, you can see I got the BSA and the ESP. Go ahead and click install. Activate it, and there you go. Now, I would go ahead and move this up. I know it doesn't say there's any conflicts, but I would put it after True Storms. Now, as far as compatibility on these, there, there is none. I tested with both, with both uh, Purity and Climbus Tamriel. It works just fine. Now, you may see a patch out there for Minty's Lightning during Thunderstorms for Climbus of Tamriel. That was for version... 3.1. With version 5, they built it with compatibility for lightning during storms. So you don't need it. I mean, you don't need the patch. So that's going to work just fine the way it is. Plugins on this. You can see it's at the bottom. I would go ahead and run loot again. And it didn't change anything. That's probably fine. I didn't have any problems during testing on that as well. So there you go, guys. That's all your weathers. You've got Purity all set up, or you can set up Climbs of Tamriel. You've got some true storms going on, and you've got lightning during the storms. My personal choice, I will not be using true storms. And the reason being is that for gameplay during the rain, it looks like just a sheet of drops. You can't see anything. But, uh, Clamps of Tamriel will probably be my choice just for the variety of weathers, and I like the color palette better than Purity. But that's just a personal choice. I think Purity is a great mod, and I, like I said, I used it for a long time. You know, it, it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful, but Clamps of Tamriel is going to be my choice. 
So there you go, guys. Another episode down. And the next episode, we'll be covering things like Clarilux. And with all this increased darkness we just put into our game, wearable lanterns or quick light. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel. And I'm signing off. <laughs>